So, Rudy, we are not we are not done yet, right? I feel like With you know North? we we're not i i think we've done a fair amount of just diving into architecture which was awesome with dan but i believe we have another guest that's going to magically appear on this screen man i'm just hungry after all that grilling oh man we did the same thing i love it not even <laughs> hey guys oh is it i'm hungry tim. for another guest yes tim madison <laughs> hey i'm back you guys had me once, you were, um, made the mistake of having me again, so here we are. Reminds me of something uh, that, you know, kind of inspired uh, me from one of your shows on a previous episode. You guys talked about something, a project idea, and I got inspired by it yeah. and decided to build it. But I was wondering if we could just go to a, a quick flashback. I did get this uh, little toy here. It makes a little noise, so it quacks when you when you push it. I actually want to. I want to. I want to. You know, deconstruct this and make it IoT fied. Before before we go to that question, what would be very funny is um, if you made that noise, that that thing you had up. If you had it say yeah. in Werner's voice, everything fails all the time. Like that. that would be, that would be <laughs> awesome. And we get it made in his image as well. So, <laughs> Everything fails all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if he watches this and he's like, you know what? I like it. The so, internet lives so forever. <laughs> that, that is the flashback. So now I'm going to present to you guys for the first time ever the Werner Vogels action figure with the iot -ified power podium. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> So, let's fire this thing up and make sure that it works. Now, right now I've got a hot spot here that it's going to hook up to. So I just need to let that boot real quick. Okay. And then I'm going to plug this thing in and show you how it works. All right, let's do it. So I got a little web interface. And I have all these different Werner sayings and I can click a button and let's see if you can hear this. Everything fails all the time. There you go. IoT controlled <laughs> Werner Vogel's action figure. It's got a couple more things. Let's see if I can get something going. Uh, all right. Maybe not so much right now. Some technical difficulties. You did get everything <laughs> failed all the time. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't drop it. We might lose you. Uh oh. I think we're in trouble. Who told you you could do this? <laughs> you talk to PR? Legal? My <laughs> God. Everything <laughs> feels all the time. Hi, <laughs> guys. I, I, I absolutely love it. It is. I, I, I'm, I'm really stoked. I, I'm really on it at the same time. When I said that for the first time, everything fails all the time. I was on, I was real because <laughs> everything fails all the time, <laughs> and I never knew this was going to take its own life. So, uh, yeah. so <laughs> thank you very much for doing it, um, Tim. I I really like the measurements you've given me because <laughs> I've never been so skinny in my whole life. <laughs> and to be honest, I have a bit more hair than I anticipated, but okay, it looks good. <laughs> And the one thing it does really well is to do the uh, the Indian head shake. Like, hey, do you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, do you have something more? <laughs> so, how long did it take you to build it? Um, let's see. So, I think, you know, getting the model made, we had somebody else do the model. I sent them a bunch of pictures, and we coordinated with the production staff to get that made. I think that took maybe three days, and then they shipped it over from China uh, by airmail, which was pretty cool. Um, the code yeah. itself, so that inside this um, is an Espressive chip. Uh, it's an ESP32 Wi-Fi module, and I used it in the Arduino mode and wrote code for that. So there's, we're actually gonna, we're gonna share that code in the future and show people how everything was built. Okay, cool. But that, that code, I would say probably took about a week. And the funny thing is everyone thinks, oh, you know, Arduino is so easy. You just, you know, 
put things together. And this is one of the reasons why I like doing new projects is that I got into the Arduino environment and I realized that some of the you know shortcuts people take to build these projects quickly actually made it more difficult for me to take a simple project and expand it into something uh, more complete like this. So this has uh, this has the expressive chip in it. It's got a digital audio um, processor in it. It's even got a touch sensor, so we can make like touch points to say different things on the um, on the podium. So that took about a week, and I think the surprisingly the cloud component, like the little web interface that I built, um, I had zero experience with the serverless um, tool, the serverless command line tool. I had built serverless things before, but I decided let me try it out, and. Under 30 minutes, I had the whole thing running, which was amazing. Like I just took some took some example code, modified it slightly, added an interface to it, and that that was by far the easiest part. So I would say altogether, you know, it took maybe seven eight days total. Nice. So the chip is uh, Arduino compatible, so you just use the traditional tools to write yeah. to build for that particular chip. Okay. Yeah, that's Very right. Cool. You, can, you can add it to the Very board cool. library and say use the ESP32 as an Arduino. Okay. And it's cool because it's it's fast, 240 megahertz, and it's got two cores. So if you need to run two different processes at the same time, it can okay. run simultaneously. And it costs two bucks. It's mm. pretty amazing. Okay. So how, what does the, the complete package look like? When you, do you get the chip, but you get the board as well? Or do you have to solder everything together? Uh, there's a there's some soldering involved. Um, it's basically the um, the audio interface takes maybe four wires and the touch interface takes three wires, I think. So altogether, it's it's only seven seven or eight solder points. Uh, one of the things I wanted to do with this project was to make sure that uh, what people refer to as discrete components, like resistors and capacitors and all that kind of stuff, that there wasn't any of that stuff in there. So I chose off the shelf components that could be wired together with just straight wires. It made it very, very easy. Because I think something that blocks people from trying projects like this, uh, here we go, here's, so this is the video about, you know, the process okay. of putting it together. So first I selected the expressive chip, ESP32, Popped it on the, the perf board here. Um, and this is a special version of the ESP32 that specifically fits on the breadboard. Some of the very early versions didn't fit. And then you can see here, there's just really, uh, there's two chips in the speaker. And that's the digital audio speaker on the right-hand side of the screen, or the digital audio interface on the right-hand side of the screen. And once I got everything working on the perf board, I just hacked off all the chips, got ready to solder it together. Um, <laughs> so you get a clean underside of the board there. Nice. And then I fired up my my favorite soldering iron, the Hako. Now I'm I am not an, an electronics person or an expert solderer, but I can get it done. But I got to say this this has been the the soldering iron that has saved me multiple times. So I fired that thing up, prepped the iron, and then just started. Uh, like I say, there's no turning back here. It's uh, it's you know soldering everything and just committing to it. Uh, I'm much more of a software person because for me, there's no undo for when you uh, make a mistake with soldering. So this, this is a big leap for me to do. But you know, this uh, this soldering all told um, maybe took you know two hours, including all the prep and everything. And that's mm -hmm. that's kind of the guts of the board that you see there: the espressive chip, the digital audio file, uh, digital audio amplifier, and the touch model. And then somebody, Anton, somebody who I work with, another solutions architect, he built this 3D printed base. I literally took a tracing of the bottom of this thing. I basically drew an oval and took a picture of it. And less than a day later, he came back and said, does that this look cool. good? I said, this looks amazing. And you can't see the inside here, cool. but it's even got places to mount all of the parts that I have. Like it's, it's missing the bottom plate there, mm -hmm. but he did all of this and 3D printed it and uh, you know, met me in New Jersey handed off the board in a parking lot, which felt shady, but was pretty fun. Uh, and then, and then I, and then I announced Sometimes it. you gotta do it. <laughs> and then here we go. I'm, I'm calling it the, uh, the power podium, the iot to use Rudy's term, the iot power podium. It's pretty awesome. Oh, yeah. nice. I'm not there yet, but I'm looking forward to it. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah I don't we're going to tell Okay, yeah, talking, but, um, talking about soldering. Talking mm -hmm. about soldering, so you say it's not that much work, but so if if someone just has a, uh, let's say, a decent tech, let's say software background, would they be able mm -hmm. to do that? With uh, the right yeah, actually, to go with it? so I think, yeah, there's a there's a second option for if somebody wants to build this without soldering. So you can take the existing kit with pre-soldered pins 
And then there are the, just these female to female jumper wires that you can hook up between them. And that's what I did okay. on the perf board. You could do the same thing inside. It's not, it's not as rugged. So if you, you know, you don't want to bang it around too much, but it's the same thing. Somebody can do that. And, you know, we're going to have a wiring diagram that shows exactly how to do it, color coded everything. Uh, I think it should be, should be pretty easy. I think, like I said, I have all software background. Um, I've done a very little bit of electronics uh, and a very little bit of soldering and, and I was able to put this together. Um, okay. And yeah, so the chip has Wi-Fi on board. Yeah, the chip has Wi-Fi on board. Uh, it has Bluetooth as well. I'm not using the Bluetooth yet, but you know, could use it in the future. Uh, and it's got this thing called Spiffs, which is a file system where I can take and put the WAV files and put all the IoT configuration. That was one of the problems I ran into was a lot of things were hard coded. You know, pasting certificates into uh, yeah. into source code files and rebuilding things. But I set it up so that you could drop those files onto the device and even send it a command through IoT Core and say download a new file, so I could dynamically add WAV okay. files to it. So it the thing is just incredibly powerful. Okay, so so this is a this is a work. This is a personal project. I mean, how do you, what do you guys? Uh, what do you do there? I mean, is that uh, do you? Is this something that you just do in your spare time, or is it just part of work? Um, I would say both. Uh, I think it's a weird job yeah, for me. Like, like my weird. job, my job is my hobby. So uh, it's it's both. Uh, I actually didn't spend too much after hours time on this. Um, I kind of tried to fit it in between things here and there. But yeah, this uh, this is very much a kind of a mix of of work and fun. Hmm. Yeah. So yeah, Amazon is uh, really learn and be curious. Eh? I mean, I always felt like so. So one of the questions I often get is is sort of what I mean. How do you stay up to date? Yeah, and I've learned over time that if you don't set time aside, like block time and, and turn off your email and turn off your phone and things like that, you don't get anything done in, in that sense, in terms of learning. Mm -hmm. yeah, you, and whether that is using the new mobile SDK uh, and getting your hands dirty or, you know, if you never programmed a line in Rust, how can you have a conversation with your engineers whether that is the right tool to do, to use? Yeah, at Amazon, we still, believe that our executives or everybody should be able to dive deep. And so to be able to dive deep, you need to continue to learn. And you can only learn by getting your hands dirty. Yeah, so I'm really looking forward to uh, to getting the base and to program yeah. it with some uh, <laughs> maybe slightly more naughty sayings. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, it's pretty funny in the in the uh, well. Twitch chat, Tim, they're looking for a Andy Jassy version and uh, James Hamilton. Oh. So you may you may you may start a collectibles. I think. Oh this man. <laughs> this, yeah, that I, I would like to see all of those. I want to I want to have those all on my desk back here. Um, all the yeah, 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 and all talking to each other. Yep. Yes. Yeah, I'll share the web interface yeah, so people can trigger them live. Yeah. I just want that one button that talks to my dog that says, get me a beer. Um, <laughs> we can, we can do do that. And uh, and be motion censored, right? <laughs> I can walk to the kitchen. You're like, wait a minute. <laughs> we can we can do that. We can do yeah. that. Hey, guys. Um, no, so up here, we got the architecture Very diagram cool. just to show you really simply of, of how it works. And again, mm -hmm. expressive chip with the internal file system on the left hand side. That's that spiffs uh, where you can put the configuration in MP3s, makes it real easy to update um, the digital audio to that amplifier chip. Uh, and then the uh, I squared C, which is the um, inter IC communication standard for a capacitive touch if you want to add buttons. Um, one of the reasons I didn't want to add regular buttons was they're kind of hard to mount. Capacitive touch lets you just kind of run a wire anywhere and let somebody touch it and trigger something off. Oh. So it's got support for that as well. Okay, that's but cool. the, um, so the device starts up and it connects to IO, it connects to Wi-Fi and then connects to IoT Core. Kind of the amazing thing about it is, you know, everyone's used to, um, you know, a Linux box taking, you know, a minute and a half, two minutes to boot. Uh, this thing connects to IoT Core in ten seconds, which is really impressive when you want to get something done quickly. So. It connects to IoT Core, it sends a debug message, it says it's online, and then this API gateway interface that I built with uh, Serverless just lets me click on any one of uh, any one of those sayings. It sends a message to IoT Core and the device is subscribed to them, and when it sees the message, it says, you know, play file one, play file two, play file three, or play a random file. And that's it, then it just comes out. Okay. And with, uh, with the hotspot, I can just run this thing anywhere. I was demoing it to, uh, to Anton in my car yesterday, which was awesome. Was that after okay? The so we could have something like, uh, yeah. so we could have something like master and following or master 
I should say, I don't know what the political correct words at this moment are. Um, leader and follower, backup, I think. Or primary for, yeah. and a whole leader and followers. Primary, or, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, leader yeah. and followers. Sure. So we can have one that actually makes all, makes James Hamilton and Andy and all the others say something because I tell Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we can have one say something. When it's done, it sends a message. So everyone in order says something down the line. repeat it all. You say everything I, I fails all the time, and then yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Sounds like a nursery rhyme. Uh, I was thinking of this automatic Twitch keynote that just triggered itself. So that would, that's pretty, that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah it's very cool. Though. I, I assume, I mean, how, if you look at sort of the, these home projects in IoT, yeah, I mean, whether it's home automation or things like that, or getting your lights to turn on and things like that, how much of that is applicable, let's say, to beyond the realm of home automation, but also to, let's say, industrial automation or factory floor automation and things like that? Yeah. I think, you know, learning how all these things hang together on even the Arduino environment uh, is really applicable to all those things because there's a lot you have to manage and understand about, you know, resources, being careful with your resources, making sure that, you know, things run when they're supposed to, make sure you're not leaking memory. Uh, all those things are very, very important in industrial, much more rigid in the sense of like industrial components. Uh, but I think that some of it trans transits over really well. If you start to learn C and yeah. program on the Arduino or in Espresso's case, if you go to the ESP IDF uh, and use their own environment, um, these are production chips. Like they, these are products. I have products in my house that use this same chip. Um, so. Yeah, I think that this is going to filter down into the uh, industrial space. I think there's still a lot of yeah. older school PLC think, things yeah. that that are out there. Um, hmm. But as things become more flexible, yeah. I think they'll they'll be adopting these these more modern chips. So I think the opportunity yeah. is there to move into that space. Yeah. I think the interesting thing. Yeah, yeah. One of the one of the things I um, if I, if we I mean if we're just talking about industry 4.0, or at least here in Europe, they are. Um, but at the same time, I mean the. Um, was it the, the average age of a uh, of a sensor in factory floor is more than 35 years old yeah and so mm. most of them are all just just level triggers they're, they're alarms basically they're not yep. built for data generation and things like that so uh yeah i think there's um uh, something i heard is the west the manuring out floor is the oldest it has ever been in manufacturing and mm -hmm. so i think there's a lot of um there's a lot of innovation around the corner uh, because all of these these environments are ripe for moving from let's say just alarming to becoming uh, preventive and 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 truly automation. Yeah, yeah, and we see a lot of projects like that where people um, they don't want to do rip and replace. They're really reluctant to get rid of those old things because they work. But then they take yep. something like this espressive chip or you know any one of our other partnerships and they hook it up and. The, the logic there is really easy. You know, if something fails, it sends a line high and then you just want this device to be able to communicate to the IoT core and then do all the cloud processing yeah. after that. So you might be able to do modernization by just adding this onto an existing system. So yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I think, yeah, I yeah, think there's, yeah. there's a lot of place for people to learn this kind of stuff and, and apply it to, uh, to real professional projects as well. Okay. Yeah, if you guys are interested, uh, one of the most exciting ones, early ones, you know, is um, we had the CTO, the CIO of Woodside, the uh, natural gas uh, uh, provider mm -hmm. in uh, in Australia, talk about yeah. how they changed the censoring on the refrigerating of the natural gas. It's an amazing story. He, I think, mm -hmm. he presented at the Australian summit two three years ago. It's absolutely worth uh, taking a look at that. There's also a bunch of other videos where once they so they did the whole first project. So. The story here is this liquid natural gas needs to be frozen down to 200 degrees on the zero or something like that. And so they only had the old PLCs on their refrigerators, meaning that mm -hmm. they only went off in case of an alarm, which meant that they had to empty the tanks and it would be empty for two weeks and they would lose a lot of money. Um, and apparently these accidents happen where, where frothing or something like happens. But by changing the sensors to something that generates data, they can now do preventive uh, uh, maintenance on them, they know when these things are going to happen and can shut down things before the accidents actually happen. And, and so they never told us about this. And so instead of just, then yeah, they put what, a few hundred sensors up. And a few days later, after the big success of this, they just threw another 10,000 sensors up. Yeah. 
And, and at that moment, he mm -hmm. called them saying, hey, guys, what are you doing? Yeah. And, and since then, they've done amazing projects. There's lots of very, very cool videos about how Woodside is using AWS. So, um, Rudy, well, um, I heard that you guys are uh, starting another show. Can you tell me about that? Yeah, yeah. I think we uh, we just had our the season two finale for this one for IoT All the Things, but we are also be doing another season of IoT All the Things. And I think, interestingly enough, Tim is going to be doing a lot more of this building and experimenting as well. So that can lead into yeah. some of the cool things that Tim's doing. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So um, Thursday, July twenty third, we're planning on launching a new show. The show is going to be called All the Experiments, the AWS Side Project Show. Uh, Aaron yeah. McGill, another solutions architect, and I, uh, we're going to be interviewing subject matter experts. We're going to be seeing demos of people's projects. We're going to ask people, you know, were you just trying to learn something as you, you were asking before, or were you trying to solve a particular problem? And then we're going to try to find out, you know, what challenges do they run into and then learn from them what best practices they can share from, from all of the things that they've built. Okay. Uh, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna share code. We're gonna share uh, you know 3D models like this uh, the power podium I'm calling it now. Have wiring diagrams, and really what we want to do is we want to show people how projects are built so that people can learn by building. And we want to be very clear that you know no matter how long you've been doing this, not everything goes according to plan. Uh, I learned a lot when I started doing the Arduino code for this project, even though I had done a lot of Arduino code before, it had just changed in the past year. And there was a lot that I had to go and uh, fix and you know maintain. So it's not it's not all about getting everything right the first time. There's a lot of uh, a lot of fumbling around that goes on, but you learn a lot from that. Yeah. So we really just want to encourage everyone at all skill levels to just experiment and expand their horizon. Like you said, just stay technical, be able to dive deep, um, and just give people the opportunity to share their projects uh, and learn about projects that we worked on and see how things really get put together. So we're asking people as the the summer challenge to send their projects to the hashtag all the experiments on Twitter. And you can get featured in the show, and you might even win your very own action figure. Oh, oh the hey. heat is on. <laughs> <laughs> so, action figure. All, so wait, all the wait, experiments, wait. Thursday, gonna, July 23rd. Gonna yeah, yeah. I'm going to send my cool. project to Actually, later. I think, I think there's, yeah, the, I think one of the interesting things of, of quite a few of the IoT projects, uh, home projects, are that they actually do make sense over time. So. Um, mm -hmm. in, they have a, a, a true applicable uh, area. So, uh, as you know, I, I run this TV show called Now Go Build. And we have two mm -hmm. new episodes that we will be launching in the fall, which will be India, Philippines, and Japan. And in Japan, it was all about that uh, the Japanese society is aging very rapidly. Yeah, and in the past, it would be your family members that will be taking care of you, but more and more younger people will have careers and things like that. So. Um, there's lots of people thinking about, so how can technology help you? And one of the cool ones that I saw is a, a company called, I think they're called SeaWorks. Um, they basically build centers for whether it's care homes or at your own home when you have elder family members. Very mm -hmm. simple centers like uh, knowing when someone in the middle of the night leaves the bed to go to the bathroom. Yeah. Now that's not such a big deal. However, if they don't come back in 10 minutes, that might be a big deal. Yeah, and mm -hmm. so all these small sensors around and whether there's sound or smell or noise or whatever, uh, can truly help sort of, first of all, people stay longer at home, um, yeah. uh, take care of themselves as well, have, have you know, significant increases in health. So, and, and these, are, these are not major, let's say, innovations. It's just pressure uh, sensors and then build the clouds stuff around it to uh, to make sure you can keep your family healthy so there's lots of cool stuff yes. happening and i look forward yeah. to the uh, all the experiments uh, show all right nice. no this is super exciting i mean i i can't envision another way of wrapping up <laughs> season two and starting <laughs> off some really really cool experiments with tim and Werner. it's awesome having you on Werner. as well i uh I believe a, a wise man once said, everything fails all the time. <laughs> so he's bringing us home. <laughs> Hi, guys. Perfect. Well, Tim, 
Werner, Rudy, Fine. I think yep. we've come to our end and a new beginning. Oh, so yes. hopefully everyone enjoyed it. Rudy, I know I've enjoyed it. This has been fantastic. Hey, that's great. I've had fun this season. It's glad uh, glad that we had Werner join us for the finale. Uh, thanks for coming on, Tim, as well. Wale, like you said, this is a wrap up, hey? So wait, can yeah. we can we get you to say IoT all the things, Verna? IoT all the things. All there the things. Go. What a way to end it. Nailed it. Thanks everyone for joining. Yeah. <laughs>